From our headquarters in Midtown, Crime Stoppers of Houston presents This Week's Crime Report, a look at the latest crimes investigators need your help to solve. You'll hear from victims who desperately need answers. And it shouldn't be this easy to get away with murder, you know. We'll also discuss public safety awareness with Executive Director Rania Mancarios. And as always, we'll have special guests. The Crime Report starts now. Hello, I'm Jeff McShann with Crime Stoppers of Houston, and welcome to this week's show. It's our very first. You know, here at Crime Stoppers, our goal is to keep Houston as safe as possible. And each week, members of our staff go out into the community, they speak with groups, they speak with students about public safety awareness. We also spend a great deal of time trying to help the police with their unsolved cases. Let's be honest, they're overwhelmed, and they need our help identifying and finding suspects. So over the next 30 minutes, get a close look at the suspects we are going to show you tonight. Because here at Crime Stoppers, we're ready to pay out rewards. We start with Houston business owner Gentry Kelly. She recently became a victim of a crime that happens in the Houston area at least 500 times a week. And the people who commit this type of crime, most of them are serial criminals. They wake up every day and do this for a living. I just don't understand how a human wakes up and thinks, I'm gonna go take something from somebody today because I deserve more than they deserve what they worked hard for. Kelly is a successful makeup artist and author and uses a local UPS store for all her business needs. And I office from the UPS store, like I take, I have all my packages right. sent there. And um, I was literally, I'm there every day. It's never an issue, I always park front row. And on this particular day, she stopped in for just a few seconds. I was dropping off a box. I was dropping off my AT&T router at the UPS store. It was already packed up. I literally turned my back. I think it was before I even touched the handle on the store that they were already behind me. They busted the window in her car and grabbed her designer purse. And in less than a minute, they were gone. So they took my credit cards and went straight to the Galleria. So it happened at 358. By 420, they were already using my credit card at Champs and Lady Foot Locker. In just 22 minutes, they had parked at the Galleria and were inside buying expensive athletic shoes. The female using Kelly's card is wearing white jeans and a pink shirt. When I talked to the manager of Lady Foot Locker, she said, I remember helping her. She came in with a really calm demeanor and she just said, hey, how's your day today? Really calm, really slow, and just said, are you working, are you closing tonight? And she wore size nine and a half shoe. She pointed to the exact shoe she bought. I took pictures of them. In case anyone sees a girl carrying my Tom Ford purse and those Puma tennis shoes with gold on them. Inside a nearby store in the Galleria, the male suspect is the guy wearing a hoodie and sweatpants. But Gentry Kelly and others say when he was outside the UPS store, he wasn't wearing the hoodie. He was wearing some sort of low-cut tank top or v-neck shirt or something because he had a spiderweb tattoo on his chest and upper neck area. That type of tattoo is a great clue. So if you think you might know these people, call our tip line at 713-222-TIPS. They might be driving a black charger. Crime Stoppers will pay up to $5,000 for information leading to the identities and arrest. Kelly knows she messed up and shouldn't have left her valuables in the car. Like I said, I don't, I don't leave my purse in the car. It was one of those things. You know, we all slip on our own rules. And but honestly, she didn't think anything would happen that fast. It did. And now she's angry and knows if we don't get these two behind bars, they will likely keep going to work every day, breaking glass and stealing people's stuff. I put in 80 hours a week. It's super frustrating. I've, I've risked everything to start my business. And for someone to take, whether it's $20 or $2,000, from me is extremely frustrating. And I'm just, I'm a pit bull. I'm not the kind of person that gives up. When somebody messes with me, I'm gonna find them and I'm gonna seek revenge. <laughs> Call our tip line now if you know these two suspects. In fact, be the first so we can get you that reward. 713-222-TIPS. One of the most popular businesses that are getting hit right now are check cashing stores. We have video from two recent robberies and we need your help finding these suspects. The first one took place on January 6th in the 4900 block of North Highway 6 in Harris County. After the suspects entered the store, one of the suspects pulled out a weapon and jumped over the service counter demanding all the cash out of the cash register. That is some scary stuff. Both suspects demanded the employee to take them to the store safe in the back, which she did. The suspects also stole the employee's purse, and after getting what they wanted, they fled the store 
on foot. Do you know them? I hope so. Give us a call now. You can do it anonymously. We will never know your name, and the crooks won't either. There was another cash-checking store robbed two weeks later, January 20th, on North Fry Road. Around 1.15 in the afternoon, suspect number one walks in and acts like he is a customer. The second suspect follows but walks right behind the counter and pulls out a gun and points it at the employee's stomach. He demands the money from the register and then says he needs her to open the store's safe. The victim could not open the safe and thankfully he didn't shoot her. The two cowards left the store on foot. These two suspects do not appear to be the same people that robbed the first store. They seem to be just a little bit older and heavier. Call us if you know who they are. 713-222-TIPS. This next case is a heartbreaker. And if I had one wish for today's show, it would be that somebody watching would call our tip line and let us know who is responsible for the death of young Frank Medrano. On February 18, 2015, two years ago, 19-year-old Frank Medrano was shot and killed during an attempted robbery. He was working for his dad at a new home construction site off Ella Creek near Rankin Road. And it shouldn't be this easy to get away with murder, you know. I sat down and talked with Frank's brother, Eric, and his dad, Francisco, so who are now offering a $50,000 reward for information you. leading to the identity and arrest of this unknown suspect. Eight. And I know this guy has talked to somebody about it. And uh, if there's anybody out there that knows anything, you know, uh, the amount of reward that's being given out, right. it's, uh, it's a lot of money. The shooting occurred at 7.35 in the morning, shortly after Frank arrived to work on the site. The suspect ran across the street and into an apartment complex. After jumping the security gate, you can see the suspect running towards the camera on the right side of your screen. And then he disappears. HPD put flyers out in the complex, but no tips came in. Uh, it's hard, you know. Uh, I, I pray the good Lord that, you know, somebody comes forward and, uh, and says something about it. The Madrano family is hoping the $50,000 reward will make a difference. Well, you can... You can start a new life with that amount, you know. Uh, don't have to be scared. You can always remain anonymous. Yeah. So just asking the community for help. Call our tip line right now if you know anything about this murder. 713-222-TIPS. We don't know nobody else to go but to you guys. Right. And, you know, I think uh, Crime Stoppers you know, for, for being part of the community, you know, and helping us. We are here to help 24 hours a day. We need to find this person. It has been two years. If he did this to Frank, he may have killed someone else or is willing to do it again. Well, coming up next, Senior Police Officer Jeff Breeden from HPD's Robbery Division. He'll join us. And later, a Crime Stoppers success story. Thanks to you, this woman was arrested. Welcome back. Joining me right now is Senior Police Officer Jeff Breeden with the Houston Police Department's Robbery Division. And recently, uh, Jeff started a website called HoustonPoliceRobbery.org. All in word. Yes, and I checked it out and it is awesome. It really kind of gives you an update on all the robberies around town and it lets people know uh, what's happening in their neighborhood. Right. Plus, you've got a lot of videos and and uh, still photos on there, so it's a good way to help solve crimes. And you got our logo on there as well, Crime right. Stoppers, 713-222-TIPS. So I had to have Jeff in. In fact, we're going to try to have him here every week on this show. What, what made you start the website? Well, you know, in the, in the, in the nine-plus years I've been uh, working cases, right. and, and I've been working close with, closely with you during that time, I've been able to uh, – uh, one thing that I learned and I, I kind of – discovered in that is that we've got these influx of robbery cases that come through right but we just don't uh, we just didn't have a way of putting them out putting them all out we, right. we've got a lot of them that come through but a lot of them don't ever get the exposure they need to okay and so uh, and that was up to me to really figure out well, how, <laughs> how I was going to do, do that, that. Right. yeah and I had no idea you know so um what I ended up coming up with up the idea with a website and so I you know it was and it's a website that's open to the public so people yeah. can see it and it's been great it's been successful uh, we've uh, every single robbery case that has decent video and uh, surveillance photos, 
uh, I'm able to put it out on a daily basis. Um, it's updated daily. Yeah, that's what um, I like about it is that, uh, yeah, it's it's not old stuff. You're looking at stuff that's on there new all the time. And that's just yeah. the thing. I'm, t You know, uh, and for the longest time when I was working cases, kind of the way I used to do is I would work all my leads in the cases. And then towards the end of the investigation, if I had exhausted my leads, what I would do is I would tell them. I would put it. I would send it out to Crime Stoppers. Well, right. now what I'm trying to do is turn that around with the with the detectives working the cases, and I'm saying, "Hey, don't wait till yeah. Year. Let's get that video give it to out me now. now, right? And while you're working your case, give me the opportunity to get it out to the public so we can try to get that give that case some exposure." Yeah, and so one thing cool about the website is that uh, each week you have a robbery of the week, uh, and you're featuring one case out there. And so this week it happens to be. Uh, someone that robbed uh, a Domino's pizza guy. Right, we had a, a Domino's pizza robbery that happened uh, February the 11th at four, around four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, now they're not open at that time. So no, what is going this on? is this is a couple guys uh, del with a uh, uh, delivering some supplies okay. to the Domino's. Right, and before they open up. Right, yeah. so it's at four o'clock in the morning. They just pulled in and they had uh, they were starting their unloading process, and as they were, a, a black male with a gray hoodie, uh, red lettering, uh, younger male, uh, big build. Uh, had a handgun, approached them, demanded their property, um, and we got some of it captured on video. Right, and, so, and you can kind of see his face for a brief moment. There. Right, right. Yeah, and, and, and somebody just enough, and it's yeah. and somebody will recognize him. And, right, and we're confident of it. You know? Yeah, so that's on the website right now. If you want to take a look at that, and what's cool about it is that uh, you have on there our our number, so right. you don't have to call police. You can call the Crime Stoppers number and re remain anonymous. So. If uh, if his mother is watching and right. wants to turn him in, right. he, he can call, she can call the number and and uh, he'll never know that his mom turned him in. And, and you know uh, <laughs> they they would be very surprised to know how often that happens. <laughs> yeah. And One thing I, I've noticed lately is that robberies are up, and I really don't have a reason why. I mean, do you have any? You guys talk about that over at the the robbery division. What's happening around? You here? know, it just comes and goes. And uh, one thing I've noticed that we've had an in increase of is. Um, you know, people, somebody walking up, pretending like they're going to make a purchase at right, a convenience the customer store. At a store, right? And so the clerk will open the register, and uh, as they do, uh, the person will reach over and uh, grab the money from the um, the cash register. Yeah. One particular case that we talked about on the phone that you're pretty proud of. Uh, it basically looks like the entire department got involved. Uh, crime scene investigators and and robbery is a home invasion uh, that happened uh, against an elderly couple. Right, and, and any time something happens to elder, elderly yeah, just cut, and, or, or children, yeah. you take it a little bit more personal than you yeah. than, than you normally do. And and so what happened here is uh, an 83-year-old woman and her uh, disabled husband were sitting in the living room. So he come, enters the uh, back of the house through the back, back uh, bedroom and uh, confronts both of them. Well, he's not able to get up. And, uh, so he she, being the the husband. The husband. So right. she, the the female complainant stands up. She's eighty three years old. He uh, assaults her quite badly. Hospitalizes her. Wow. And um, and there's nothing the husband can do about it because he's the, disabled. Uh, yes. Yeah. And the guy That's was forced to sit horrible. there and watch. And it was very right. disturbing to see a case like that come through our office. So um, detective worked. Uh, she worked extremely hard on the case. Uh, it was was successful in being, in being able to identify a suspect and get him charged. So he's he's been charged with the Harris County District Attorney's Office and is uh, uh, has, on, he's in the justice system, robbery. right? Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's good news. And basically, your forensic de department came up and, uh, and did a good job with that. Right. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. was he he left a fingerprint scene and, and yeah. so that we were able to. Yeah, that is great news. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you guys. I appreciate uh, it. We appreciate everybody that uh, works over there at HPD and uh, you know, keep bringing us those good stories. I know, I know you want to get those out. Uh, right, we're looking forward possible. to it. Yeah, we, and, and, and it'll be great on a, on a weekly basis being able to just to <laughs> touch base with you and just letting the citizens of Houston know about these cases that we have and, and, uh, and keeping them informed because I think that's the most important thing is um, we want to give these cases as much, as much exposure as possible. Yeah, appreciate it, Jeff. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks a lot. Jeff. Senior Police Officer Jeff Breeden with the Houston Police Department's Robbery Division. We'll be back in just a moment. Our Executive Director, Rania Mancarios, joins us with a special guest. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm Renia Mancarios, Executive Director of Crime Stoppers of Houston. Over the last few minutes, we've talked a lot about the tip line and cases we're looking to solve, but I wanted to switch gears and talk about Crime Stoppers as a crime prevention tool. We do so much in the community beyond the tip line, working with the community every day, 
going into schools, going into neighborhoods, going wherever we can to share our public safety and crime prevention messaging. And a lot of that is thanks to the donors who support us. Today we're partnering uh, with Debbie Poxavan and talking about the Crime Stoppers Prom event, which is coming up March 5th, also in partnership with Tootsies. Debbie, thank you so much for being Hi, here. Thank you so much for having me. Debbie so is a, a wife, a mother of two gorgeous girls. Thank you. She's an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and an author. Um, but her mission has really been to keep kids safe, especially when it comes to drugs and alcohol. And we're so thankful that you're taking the time to chat. <coughs> to chair this event, and I wanted to start by asking you, Debbie, raising your own two girls, what was your motto? How did you approach these topics with them? Yeah, that's a great question. I think my husband and I, we always told them the truth from they were, when they were really small. We were always very honest about drugs, sex, their bodies, um, the dangers about in the world, like what's going on, and I think it was always age appropriate. We never overwhelmed them with anything too scary, but we were always you know, wanted to be aware and let them know what was happening in the world. So I think we always just talked about it and just told them just the hardcore, bare truth about everything. Just prepared them. I'm not perfect. I don't know what my kids are going to do, but I think as a parent, we've given them the foundation and the tools to make good decisions. And I hope and pray that we've, you know, done that correctly. One of the things we always talk about is don't leave your child to make a decision like that without having all the tools necessary. And a lot of times those tools will come from you, the parents. So with our prom event, what we're hoping to do, and we're so thankful to you for oh, sharing so it, and we're so thankful to be working with Tootsies. Our goal is to really get girls out there, their parents, talk about fashion. We want them to look it's wonderful. Fun. It's so fun. It's the best part. Makeup, all of this wonderful stuff, but also to talk about the realities and the risks and, and giving them those tools that they need to go out and have a wonderful night safely. What messages are you hoping that these girls will walk away with and their parents? Right. I think just one mistake, just one wrong decision can change the course of your life. If you get drunk and you have a head injury, yeah. if you take ecstasy and you, you die from mm -hmm. it, which always happens, mm -hmm. you know, there's always some story of a child having that happen. There's just so many mistakes that can happen and just one you know, one bad decision can change your entire life and your family and your friends and everyone. It can be devastating. And it's so I such think a fun just day. Just give them the information. Just if they can just stay away from all right. of it. If you can just get through that night. Yeah. But it's not just that night. It's like every night. Yeah. It's all the other nights. And I just think speak, talking to them when they're young is what reinforces all this. Well, we're so thankful to you, Debbie, Thank you. and thankful to everybody else who will be joining us at our prom event. If you want to get involved or learn more about what we're doing, please just join us at crime-stoppers.org. We'll have all the information there. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you, you Debbie. Idea. Thank you. Coming up next on tonight's show, marketing director Tanya Cruz. She'll join us with a special guest. But first, this brief note about bullying. It's a problem we're having not only here in Houston, but across the country. Stay tuned. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere. The words we say, the things we do, they can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. There's a hope that's for you. Even if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you. Welcome back. My name's Tanya Cruz, and I'm the Director of Marketing here at Crime Stoppers of Houston. Joining me now is Michelle Sachs, our Safe School Program Manager. So Michelle, our viewers just watched a PSA about bullying, which is, I know, one of the topics that your program covers in the schools. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, I'd love to. So most people, when you hear of Crime Stoppers, you think of a tip line. What little know is that we've been part of schools for about 20 years. We've always given students a safe and anonymous way to be able to report crimes and potential dangers on their campus, such as drugs, weapons, now, in the day and age that we are, um, we've been focus focusing a lot on prevention and bullying in particular. Um, that seems to be a big issue. And 
not only are they being bullied in person, but also online. Um, so we focus a lot on cyber safety. And we go out to schools and we talk to students about how to be an ally, how to spot some signs, how to set themselves up for success even, um, and explain to them some of the implications and some of the consequences of bullying. Um, there are legal ramifications um, and also even just academic ones because they can get in trouble at school um, without necessarily maybe being in trouble with the law. So we want to talk to them. We want to make sure that they feel safe and supported um, at home and at school. And I understand your program is completely free. It is absolutely free and we're available to any school or really just any group of students um, anywhere in the greater Houston area. So you just came back from Paris, Paris, Texas, that is. You were there for a special conference. Yes. Um, so my colleague Paige and I were in Paris, Texas last week for the Texas Crime Stoppers Conference. And this conference is pretty spectacular because it brings together students, middle and high school students from all over Texas. Um, you bring them together for three days to be able to discuss some of the things that they deal with at school. Um, bullying is always a hot topic um, because they're all dealing with it. And it's really interesting to see them bring their ideas. Um, and they're giving them tools, they go through training, um, but really depending on what region of Texas, it's really cool for them to see that this is an issue all over the state, it's not just regional. Um, so they take these tools and they take them back to their schools and they're able to use them um, in their own schools and their communities. We are hosting next year's conference here in Houston from February 26th through the 28th of 2018. So we're excited to have everyone here and to share the resources that we have available here in Houston with the rest of the state. Okay, so for our viewers that want your program in their schools. Well, our web website is always a great um, first step because we um, detail our program. Um, there are various programs that we take out. Um, like you mentioned, they're all free of charge and to, you can actually request a presentation from the website. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. And we thank you both. Coming up next, a tragedy in Houston. A young man is murdered trying to protect his mom at a Subway restaurant. The murder is hitting the city hard. We'll talk about it. And we'll also have a Crime Stopper success story. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You know, each week on this show, it is my goal to share with you a Crime Stopper's success story. Tonight, it involves this caretaker, a woman who was on the run until our viewers got involved. A family member of this 94-year-old woman thought something wrong might be happening while the caregiver was in their home. So they set up this camera in the living room. Well, their intuition was correct. Take a look. The caregiver, Brenda Floyd, can be heard yelling at the elderly woman for feeding her dog people food. Floyd then hit the frail woman several times and ordered her to get up and go to her room and to bed. After seeing this video, the family reported the incident to the Memorial Village's Police Department. Assault charges against an elderly person were filed at the DA's office, but no one could find Floyd. The police contacted Crime Stoppers of Houston, and we immediately put the video out and her photo. The video was aired by every news outlet in Houston, and many picked it up across the country. And within a few days, a person called HPD with a suspicious person report. The caller said they had spotted someone who looked like Floyd. And it was her, and she was arrested. Thanks to everyone who aired the video and the person who called in. Because this is how Crime Stoppers works. We end tonight's Crime Stoppers of Houston's Crime Report with the tragic story of Javier Flores. You probably know it by now. Wednesday night, he was working at a subway store with his mother. Two men walked in. One of them threatened to shoot Javier's mother. Javier intervened and was shot. He was rushed to a hospital, but didn't make it. The men were trying to rob the subway store. A concerned citizen contacted us here at Crime Stoppers and donated an additional $25,000 to the reward, which is now up to 30,000. All for information leading to the identity and arrest of these suspects. As we leave you tonight, here are excerpts from a press conference we had Saturday morning about this murder. So long, everyone, and stay safe out there. We would like to say that, you know, there's, there's one person in this incident that shot, and there's one that was there with him as far as the suspects go. If the suspect that did not shoot and his family or anybody that knows him or is in his circle is watching this, 
and he wants to distance himself from the suspect that did shoot, we encourage you to call us, give the information. You can call anonymously or you can call and turn yourself in. But because of the publicity that this has got and the reward that's out there, um, we feel that you're going to be caught and we want to give you an opportunity to distance yourself from the person that shot and we know you didn't shoot. Um, the vehicle that he's talking about, we have a video and we'll, we have pictures that we're going to show you. Uh, we believe it to be a uh, late model Mazda protege and it's going to be tan in color, or possibly gold. Uh, so that was captured on video and we do have a pretty good guess that that's going to be the car that we're looking for. Um, so I would like to turn it over to the family uh, at this time. You have a few words to just say what it would mean to you and your family to, uh, I know it's not going to bring him back, but what would it mean to you and your wife and uh, your entire family here today uh, to get these people behind bars? We here, we here because we want justice. Javier was a good kid. Javier, he always stretched his hand to everybody. Javier, he always saw people, I always show since he was a baby to respect people and to treat everybody equally. Javier, it was a it was a part of the theater class in school, and this year he was about to graduate and join the Marine Corps. Now, to plan my son, I'm not planning my son's graduation, I'm planning my son's funeral. Because these two cowards came and took my son's life the same way that they did, the same way that they, They say, they say the same courage that they have to kill my son. I, I want them to have the same courage to show themselves and say, I cure you, son. I'm here to turn myself in. But y'all know it's going to be like that. So that's why we put everything on the detectives. We trust them, and I know they're going to do a good job, and we're going to get them.